Hi, my name is Emily Crashell, and I'm presenting on my research investigating variations in unemployment between North and South Spain and associated implications. This research is done under the Departments of Economics and Global Studies under research mentors Dr. Glenn Waddell and Dr. Dennis Galvan. Spain's unemployment is roughly double the average European unemployment rate and has the highest unemployment in the Union. This has made the country the subject of various austerity policies, and other EU nations are subject to recovery aid costs and the negative effect on the euro due to Spain's unfavorable economy. This leads to resentment from both parties. The overall unemployment in Spain is driven up by the astronomical unemployment levels in its southern regions. Unemployment in Spain's southern regions is, on average, 10 points higher than that of the northern communities. Unemployment in general has many negative side effects. Negative economic effects include lower disposable income and, as a result, lower purchasing power, low worker morale and higher numbers of discouraged workers, and a lower economic and industrial output. There are negative infrastructure effects of high unemployment, such as less transport and fewer health care options and other resources in communities with lower unemployment. Worst of all, high unemployment is correlated with indicators of well-being, such as higher stillbirth rates, a higher proportion of adults being prescribed antidepressants, higher drug and alcohol consumption, and more frequent instances of suicide. Based on unemployment rates in the North, Spain has the capability to reduce these negative metrics in the South by improving factors that contribute to higher unemployment. The purpose of this research is to decompose the unemployment rates in Spain to determine two things. Firstly, what factor or factors most explain the unemployment rates in Spain? Second, how much of the unemployment difference is explained purely by a difference in region and therefore factors that cannot be corrected, such as climate, race, religion, culture? The model used in this research is an ordinary least squares estimation of a linear regression of various var variables on unemployment, education level, gender composition, industrial output, population, age, and region. This regression breaks down the possible contributing factors of unemployment through the estimation of a coefficient for each variable. The R-squared value indicates how much of the difference in unemployment is explained by the differences in the variables of the model, and the p-value helps determine the significance of the results of the regression. Variables such as religion and race were omitted because they can't be fixed, they can't be corrected. There's no better or improved religion or race, nor an ethically sound policy that could change these demographic variables. While these factors may have an effect, it's also very likely that disenfranchised communities gravitate towards less affluent regions, which are less expensive to live in, therefore creating a false causal effect if regressed. The variable of prevalent industry was also omitted for several reasons. First, the relationship between certain industries and labor volatility has already been studied at great length. Second, any given industry becomes prevalent in a region for a variety of reasons, often having to do with climate or natural resources. These factors may confound with the region variable of Spain or result in reverse causality. For these reasons, it was determined to be best to omit these variables from the regression. The significance of education in this regression shows that education is likely the greatest contributor to unemployment. The improvement of education systems, therefore, would likely have the greatest positive effect towards reducing unemployment. Increasing education and promoting secondary and tertiary education in southern areas with low education and high unemployment would likely attract more businesses who desired skilled workers. As a result, fewer young people would need to leave the region to find unemployment, and more income would be able to circulate in these regions. Additionally, the retention of more young workers would help offset the negative increased age effect displayed in the controlled regression. The coefficient for the variable representing gender proportion also showed significance in the controlled regression. In regions with a higher percentage of male population, there was lower unemployment, and the significance of this effect shows a possible bias against women in the labor market. Initiatives to further female participation in the labor market, especially in sectors which could be transplanted to high unemployment regions, would help reduce the effect of this negative gender bias. This practice would be in line with the UN's Sustainable Development Goals for 2030 and would bring Spain up to par with other Western European nations. The significance of the variable representing population indicates a positive relationship between unemployment and population. This could be explained by several factors. 
Firstly, Spain is one of the main reception points to the EU for migrants and displaced persons. The South, being closest to Africa, will have the highest influx of displaced persons seeking, un- seeking employment. Second, impoverished individuals of Spanish citizenship would be expected to relocate to autonomous communities with the lowest living expenses. It would be expected that regions with high unemployment would have the lowest occupancy demand and therefore would have the most cost-effective communities in which to live. The results of the regressions show that it's social factors rather than industrial and labor market factors that are negatively impacting unemployment. If the focus of the European Central Bank and the Spanish government were to turn from conservative fiscal policy to increase social programs to promote factors such as education, unemployment would likely recover at a more rapid rate. Once Spain is on par with other European nations in terms of metrics such as education, gender equality, and youth unemployment rates, conservative fiscal policy could be implemented with greater efficacy. Until then, the policies and restrictions enacted by the Spanish government and the EU will do nothing but hamper the growth of business and the reduction of unemployment in southern Spain. If there was equality in terms of education and gender across the EU, there would also be less demand from citizens who reside in high unemployment and impoverished nations and displaced persons who are new immigrants to the EU to gravitate towards northern Europe as they do now. This would reduce the strain of these populations on Northern Europe and allow for more equal dispersion of people and access to services for all. Thank you so much.